Hi, Sachin. Sachin, can you hear me? Sachin? Sachin, can you hear me? Sachin, can you hear me? Bimsing? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm Anandi. Okay. Yes. Sachin is there? Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this uh, webinar. Uh, so today's uh, topic is about uh, continuous integration and continuous testing. Just before starting it, I want to have a little introduction about myself. I'm a DevOps uh, test automation consultant, a trainer and blogger. Oh. Can you all hear me clearly? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And I've been in the industry for nearly 17 years, uh, now fully into DevOps test automation and uh, consulting for setting up the DevOps test environment uh, using various uh, tools and technologies. So I have written some blogs. My blogs are available in Medium. And I have my YouTube channel uh, where I have started with little of uh, test automation tools about it. And uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Um, my at Anandi K. OK, so let me start with uh, today's uh, topic. Like continuous integration and continuous testing. Any idea? What is it? You can please post it in the chat box. Any questions and uh, any uh, knowledge sharing, please post it in chat box. Yes, 
Hi, everyone. So, so any any idea about what is is it is a process is yes, uh, continuously deploying our code is yes, exactly is yes. so today's uh, topic is fast and effective way of delivery with quality yes uh, sajat it's true so we want to have a quick feedback and we want to deliver a quality product continuous building test delivery and deployment yet yes abhunesh yes one way of uh, deployed methodology yes Pushottam, yes. Yes, method to automate the. Um, can you all please kindly be on mute, um, so that it will not disturb others. Yes, environment and test environment before final deliverable allowing following the agile methodology. Yes, uh, Nand Sharma. Yes. So let me uh, see the topic. Um, okay, we'll see elaborately how what is continuous uh, integration and what is continuous testing. And before that, we will see little introduction about uh, uh, DevOps lifecycle and what is continuous testing, how the industry we are following the continuous testing and continuous integration. How do we start implementing in our project and what are the various tools for um, continuous test, testing like if you want to do the continuous testing then we want to do the automation okay so what are all the various test automation tools are available uh, and uh, which one is uh, most widely used now why I, again we are going to see cypress about cypress uh, how the cypress have uh, special features of uh, running the test cases in continuous integration environment okay the highlights of Cypress we are going to see, okay? So at the end, we will have a little demo on how we can execute our Cypress test cases in continuous integration environment from any CI tool like Jenkins, how do we integrate and how do we, uh, how it is helpful for uh, continuous testing. We'll see the little demo on it, okay? Okay, before starting with the DevOps lifecycle, um, let me give a little introduction about what all the different um, software development lifecycle methodologies we have used uh, before this one. We have used many, out of which uh, the familiar and most widely used ones are waterfall model and agile methodology. Okay. And uh, almost for the past uh, two decades, we have uh, started using Agile. And before that, we have used the waterfall model. Still, we are using waterfall model for, yes, um, for smaller applications. Still, we are using the waterfall model. So what is in waterfall model? Okay, again, in waterfall model, we will have uh, different stages. And each stage will be in a sequential order. Uh, after completing the previous stage only, we will be moving toward the next one. So once we have moved to the next stage, then we cannot go and change anything in the previous one. So here again, the, pro uh, the process, uh, the stages are like uh, requirement, design, implementation, verification, like a testing, and we'll go for maintenance. Okay, so here after, Completing the implementation, we will be starting with the testing. So the problem is here is, so in the, throughout this uh, webinar, we will be discussing how far we will be using the continuous testing, how far the testing is uh, followed in each methodology, how we are going to use it in the DevOps methodology, okay? So in waterfall model, when we come for the testing, almost the implementation has been completed. All the functionalities have been implemented. 
so there is no chance of changing any major functional changes in our application so some drawbacks are there so and uh, while uh, development after completing the development when we are giving our application the developed code to our customer um, because if in case of uh, the huge project and all the development duration will be more so again the customer expectation would be different by the time if you are delivering the application their business model would have been changed their business uh, methodology the requirements would have been changed so which may not be accommodatable in our waterfall model so some there are some drawbacks were there so what we want to do is instead of developing the entire functionality and uh, delivering it to the customer we want to have a smaller chunk like uh, user stories we want to have each user story we want to develop and um, test it and give it up for the customer so that our user also can view the test um, workable smaller module in a short duration and they can also provide the feedback okay so that is where the agile uh, methodology has come again in the, in the agile methodology also the iterations uh, the stages will be uh, the same but in a smaller interval we have started developing the application where we have uh, do the requirement implementation and testing so here the agile methodology we will call this uh, duration as the sprint duration either the sprint duration may be uh, two to four weeks of time hope uh, most of you have worked in the agile uh, methodology so here the duration would be two to four weeks of time where the business uh, for each feature the business analyst um, whereas the developer and the tester will be involved and once the development is completed we'll do the testing immediately and give the feedback so here the advantage here is we'll give the quick feedback so based on the tester's feedback the implement code will be implemented so when we deliver uh, for deployment the code will be more uh, stable uh, we can deliver the quality product to the end customer okay so these are all the advantage of agile okay okay the testing we are doing it but what happens to the deployment and the configuration and after deployment what happens to the application in case of agile okay that is a big question mark okay so even though we are giving that we are doing the testing and we ensure the quality but after this are we testing in the um, production like environment are we ensuring the continuous um, the configurations are done properly and uh, are we ensuring this um, security is implemented from the beginning of the application are we ensuring that database security or application security or the configurations uh, everything is in proper and are we monitoring the application after deployment so these things we have to ensure okay so that is the law gap once uh, the application is developed and we want to ensure af after a delivery we want to ensure uh, whether we are uh, the application is in the stable stage and is it working and any uh, downtime or any server network issues anything everything we have to take care so for that we need uh, some um, other than uh, developer and tester we need a uh, operation team also should be there so in agile methodology what we are doing is we are developing and testing and uh, again once in three months or once in six months phase wise we are uh, deploying and during the deployment time we will be coordinating with the uh, infrastructure team or security team to make sure that we want to deploy it properly that time we will again we will end up with uh, so many surprises like the version problem the environment is not stable the environment in this environment the application is not working in this environment uh, the, again the security part the db security or uh, in in case of devops the security so so many things uh, are uh, rising up okay so what is the problem here why 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 do we get all these problems okay so the two teams again uh, 
Devan Ops teams who are supposed to work together, uh, work on different mindset and objectives. And at the end, it creates the project delay. Again, we'll be sitting for more than uh, two days for deployment with uh, so many issues. Okay. And more complexity and lesser scope of innovations. So these two main teams are working in silos. That is a main a reason for getting all these issues during the deployment. So problem of deployment and monitoring is unnoticed here. So that is the main thing, okay? So we are ensuring the quality of the application, but what about the configuration? In which environment we are going to deploy this? In which environment we are going to run it? Are we uh, ensuring that the application is running in the production-like environment? No, after moving to the production, are we ensuring is the application is running in a right way, okay? So for these things, we want a, a cross-functional team also to work together, okay? So there is a huge gap between the delivery and the deployment, okay? So how to fill this gap? So we want everyone, the cross-functional team to work together to overcome these problems. So that is where uh, the DevOps is. So DevOps is a culture adapted to create cross-discipline community to work in collaboration. And here, see as you see here in the picture, here users, business analysts, developers, testers, DB admins, operations, again, uh, security, application security team, as everyone will work together in a cooperative way through the software development life cycle. So it's not going to be a, a end process like setting up the configuration is not like that. So from the beginning, we will ensure that we are testing the application in a production-like environment. So for that, we need operation teams also to be from the beginning. And we want to ensure that the security is enabled and security is tested properly in the application from the beginning. So we want to work together to ensure the final quality, okay? So this idea is to keep development and operations talking to each other by keeping their activities as automated as possible. So in Agile, we have developed like a user stories, but in DevOps, we want to, again, these user story is split up into the functionality and we want to ensure the quality for every commit, whatever the commit, whenever we are making a commit in the data uh, version control system, we want to ensure that the committed code is running properly. Immediately, we want to create a build, deploy, and deliver, okay? So we want to ensure the production-like environment from the beginning, and we want to, for whatever the small change is happening in the system, immediately we want to verify it, and we want to ensure the quality. So that, so from the beginning, we, if you want to ensure the quality, then that will be later, there will not be any uh, surprises. So we want to, again, uh, the user stories will be developed by the developer, and it will be maintained in the version control system. For every commit in the version control system, we want to automate the testing. And again, the entire process, we cannot do it manually. That is more important in DevOps. So for every commit, we cannot do the testing or we cannot deploy the, we cannot build the code, uh, test it and do the regression testing. And we want to integrate and we want to do again do the regression testing end-to-end -end testing we cannot do it every time we cannot do it manually all these things and again setting up the environment maybe we want to if in, in nowadays we are using the if you consider the e-commerce applications and all we will be using uh, the huge users will be there so we cannot have it in a single server or something we want to automate the entire configuration itself so there are many tools available Ansible, Puppet, many tools are available. So everything throughout the uh, life cycle, we want to automate everything and continuous monitoring after deployment also, we want to do the continuous monitoring. So we want to ensure that we want to automate the entire process, okay? Once the coding is done and the rest of the process would be automated, okay? 
So for that, we'll have a different tools for each stage. We have a different tools in DevOps. And uh, okay, so what DevOps is doing, uh, it integrates our developers and testing team by continuous development, continuous integration, and continuous testing. So for till this, we are following in Agile also the same thing, like we started doing the testing immediately, the application is ready, like ship left testing, we do it. And uh, integrates the developers operations and customers by continuous deployment and continuous monitoring yes true so we want to ensure that the configuration environment and after the deployment everything is working properly so for that we are automating the infrastructure automating the workflow and continuous measuring application performance we want to do it okay so overall it improves the collaboration and productivity. So throughout the life cycle, we want to ensure that the quality is uh, verified. And we want to give the quick feedback also for a, whenever there is a small issue, we want to, then and there, we want to rectify it. So every phase we want to do the automation and we want to uh, do the testing, okay? So, uh, this picture shows that in the waterfall model, Agile versus DevOps, whereas in the waterfall, um, uh, this is the dark one is the analysis, code, test, and deploy. In case of waterfall, every phase, uh, like one by one stage, we will be doing. And after completing the previous stage only, we will be starting the next stage. The same thing is in Agile, but what we are doing is as a smaller user story for user chunk, I will be doing it. So it will be a repeated one. But again, the deployment will be like a phase wise, we will be deploying. So there we will be started facing the problem. So we want to overcome that also. Okay. And uh, so in DevOps, uh, the smaller functionality we are developing and we want to commit it immediately. And once we commit it, we want to test it, deployment, everything we want to do it in a smaller interval, okay? So that is where the DevOps is very much helpful. And uh, because of we are doing the frequent uh, deployment, we want everyone in a team uh, to have a proper communication and collaboration, okay? So in the DevOps lifecycle, if you see, the plan and coding, once the plan and coding is done, and again, the build will be building it, um, test immediately, release and deploy the application. Again, the operator, again, ensuring the configuration, everything it's up and running or not, right? whether if there is more than one instance, if all the instances are running without any issues, if any one of the instance is going down, the other instance should be up and running. So there the Kubernetes, Kubernetes pod will be helpful for planning and coding. Once the coding is done, the build, again, there are many build tools are available, Maven and Gradle many tools will be available to create a build. And once the build is ready, we want to test the application, okay? So for everything to integrate all these things, we will be using some continuous integration tools like uh, uh, Jenkins, um, Circle CI, Travis, many tools are available. Again, depends on our requirement, we will be choosing the tools here. Again, we cannot say that uh, this is the best tool for DevOps. Again, all based on our requirement, we will be choosing different tools, okay? And uh, testing and release for uh, releasing. Before that, we want to ensure the configurations. For that, well, we want to set up the configuration. Again, we'll be using it as an infrastructure, as a code, IAC, through the Ansible or Puppet. We'll be writing the YAML scripts uh, and we will deploy the code, okay? And monitoring, we have a different tools like Splunk, Nagios, many tools are available, okay? So again, entire DevOps uh, life cycle, uh, we have uh, five different phases are there and continuous uh, development. And we want to do the continuous testing to ensure the, provide the quick feedback and the continuous integration. So, so many developers will be developing the code and we want to ensure that uh, we have the tested, the uh, integrated all the code and we have tested. So once the 
check-ins uh, commits are made in the uh, any version control system we want to integrate everything so for this we'll have our many tools uh, most of the time we'll be using jenkins jenkins is one of the tool and bamboo many tools are there circle ci travis many are there so what they, these tools will do is will uh, pull the code from the github or something and create a build and start the deployment test it and start the deployment again deployment and operate both together continuous deployment because uh, we want to ensure the configuration then we want to deploy it after deployment uh, then we want to ensure whether it is running properly without any issues uh, are we facing any problems in the production so those things have to be monitor so here we have a different phases continuous development continuous testing, integration, and deployment and monitoring. Today, we are focusing more on the continuous integration and continuous testing, okay? So how the continuous integration will be helpful here, okay? So it's a practice, like whenever there is a code change in the, any change in the functional changes in the application or any new functionality added, once the code is committed by the, uh, developers we want to ensure that uh, it is working properly okay so continuous integration is the practice of automating the integration of code changes from multiple contributors into your single software project and it's a development practice that requires developers to integrate code into your shared repository several times a day so maybe we will be doing many commits in a day so many gens like um, Google, Netflix, and all, they will be doing many deployments in a day itself. They'll be doing many deployments. So for even for a smaller change, they will take entire process as the build everything, build, test, deployment, and okay, they want to ensure whether it is deployed properly. So each check-in is then verified by an automated build, allowing teams to detect the problems early. That is more important for the quick feedback, okay? By integrating regularly, you can detect the errors quickly and locate them more easily. So as long as we are finding the locating the defects at the early stage, it is very easy for us to fix the defects also. That is more important. Okay. So one of the primary benefits of adopting uh, CS is that it will save your time uh, during your development cycle by identifying and addressing the conflicts at the early stage. Okay, that is more important. So there are many tools available and uh, like Maven is the builder tool. Like Maven, we have many tools available, Gradle and many are there. And again, Git and GitHub, like GitHub, we have many um, repositories, source code repositories, GitLab, Bitbucket, many are there. So we want to maintain our source code so more than one developer will be developing so all their source code will be uh, maintained in the source code repository once they have done the commit we want to pull the code so these process we have to orchestrate okay some tool we need it to pro uh, arrange this process as a sequence so for that we have many tools continuous integration tools are there jenkins travis Circle CI, Team City, Azure DevOps, many are there. Okay, so these tools again uh, here, each as the job will be creating, and each job as a sequence will be creating. That we call it as a pipeline, CI/CD pipeline. We will call it in DevOps. Okay. So again, the question, if you see here, again more than one developer will be checking their code in any source code repository. Okay, and we'll have the automated verification process, like we'll compile the code. Again, compile, once we have done the compiler code, we'll do the static anal code analysis, like SonarCube, in case of DevOps security and all, Vera code is there. So many uh, static code analysis tools are there, we will automate, okay. So first, once every uh, developer has checked in the code, we want to, pull the code and we want to ensure that codes are uh, in a proper standard for that we will be using a right so step by step we want to ensure the quality everywhere okay 
So again, test the code, static code analysis, and we'll create the software packages. In case of any error, again, the developer again will fix the code. Again, this will be the continuous one until we get the, uh, the code without any error, okay? Again, if you see here in the below diagram, we have many uh, like uh, Jenkins, many tools are there. Like Jenkins, we have a um, uh, Bamboo, Travis, many tools are there. And what we are doing is once the developer has completed, they will be moving the code. So some test. Again, the developer, once the developer is doing that um, development, then it's there itself, they will be doing the testing. Okay, that's called unit testing. That is test driven development uh, they will be doing. So then and there they want to, once they get the requirement, the test driven development means once they get the requirement, they will start writing the test cases for the requirement and ensure that uh, they are running the test cases against the development. So by that first time, the code will, the test will fail and they will uh, refactor the code to make the test pass one by one. So they will ensure that the, the quality, uh, all the requirements, all the validations have been covered in the development itself, during the development itself. Okay, so for that, we have uh, many tools like uh, unit testing tools are available. Uh, for Java, we have JUnit and for um, NUnit, Spock test, PyTest, many are there, okay. And a continuous integration server, we periodically once that a commit is there, or if you want to set up a time during every one hour, if I want to pull the code or every two hours, or one whenever there is a commit in the database, I want to pull the code. We can configure all these things, whichever uh, based on our project need, we can configure it, okay? And we will create a build and test the application. If you want to test the application in a different uh, environment, we will be setting up the environment one by one, okay? And the um, test results will be integrated here with the source code, okay? So this is the whole continuous integration process, but the continuous integration, again, it should be followed by the continuous testing because uh, before integration, we want to ensure that um, the unit wise, the smaller, functionality is working properly or not, okay? So we want to do the continuous testing. That is continuous testing uh, refers to the execution of automated tests that are carried out at a regular interval every time the code changes are made. So we want to ensure that every time the code is changed, we want to ensure once the commit is done, we want to ensure that committed code is working properly or not. So then and there we want to um, verify and provide the feedback and ensure the quality. Okay. So these tests are conducted as part of the software delivery pipeline. Okay, the sub pipeline is nothing but the continuous uh, process done by one by one. So in DevOps, that's what we want to do as a pipeline. We want to create a jobs like we want to ensure one by one is happening automatically, okay? So here the delivery pipeline to drive faster feedback on recent changes, push to the code repository, and immediate feedback will improve the product quality. The primary goal here is to test more often, particularly at an individual level in the early stages of the development, and then testing the unified code base as a whole. So if I, we want to test it at the unit level and as the whole entire thing, we want to test it to ensure the regression also, okay? So it is practice of doing testing in a production-like environment. That is more important here. So from the beginning itself, the testing will be done similar to a production-like environment. So at the end, we will not get any surprise uh, failures or any configuration issues we will not be facing it, okay? So continuous testing encourages automating tests wherever possible throughout the development cycle at every level. Again, we have a different layers of testing. At every layer, we want to ensure that automation, okay? So because this, we, which will give day by day, the ones we include more functionality, the application size will be huger. 
and we cannot do it everything as a manual one that is the main thing we want to uh, automate everything for quicker feedback again uh, if you go for uh, benefits of uh, continuous testing there are many are there so early discovery of critical bugs that is more the important one and a seamless collaboration among developers qa and operation teams and helps to assess the quality of software developed at each stage is so once the commit is done we want to integrate and test it so we will ensure that every stage in the apply development we want to ensure the quality and we want to give the quick feedback so that developer also will have time to fix it okay can be seamlessly incorporated into devops this helps the drive the faster test results which leads to improved code quality and repeated testing ensures the minimal failure rate for new releases so in case of manual testing we cannot do this one repeated testing and we cannot ensure the quality always okay because we need time even we can do it in manual testing but it is possible but we need more time on it so one the only way to ensure is we have to go for automation faster time to market with a viable product and continuous feedback mechanism that is the reason we have to go for continuous testing in the devops environment okay okay so there are different phases are there like each phase we will be creating it in a pipeline as a each job we will be creating and we want to ensure yes uh, building test pipeline or test cases does it fall under devops or does qa team owns it in our organization test cases automation is being done by qa team uh, again it is in devops uh, we don't have a devops team or qa team like this uh, a team will have the cross functional um, team members so uh, qa automation test automation will be done by the qa team the process automations will be done by the uh, administrator team or the development team okay again what are all the uh, job we should I, again like uh, here we'll call it as a job okay what are all in the pipeline what are all the phases we want to have that will be decided by the development team okay and the uh, Team. okay based on that only we will be developing but the test automation if you consider the test automation that should be done by the qa team only uh, in my case i am writing only the jenkins file actually to clarify yeah. the doubt properly basically we are writing the jenkins file and we are running the pipelines and we are writing the jenkins file on our own i am yeah. working from working from a startup company actually we read the jenkins file we read the docker file and everything else. yes that's what here the roles are not um, uh, we cannot say here in devops uh, this is the role for the individual we cannot again here it will be like uh, uh, they are insisting in the devops methodology is insisting on the t shape knowledge that is uh, across the team everyone should have a knowledge on whatever they are using it whatever the phases they are using what all the tools they are using and individual should have in depth knowledge of any one of this that is what they are insisting yes as a practice uh, which can be uh, yeah used by yeah. anyone so anyone who has expertise can do these things yes uh, shahid yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think this is a correct. Actually, it's based on the organization structure, right? They can yes. do. Whoever have the knowledge of what is deployment, they can do. Yes. It's not there uh, depends upon the particular uh, team have to do only this kind of the process. Yes. yes. Uh, in our case, we do have a multi branch pipeline actually, and developer builds the job, and whenever the developer build job gets completed, we are going to trigger our own pipeline. Since that is a multi branch based job, right? Basically. Yes. So. once the developer job gets finished our job gets triggered automatically yeah yes 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 that's how so that we are just going to tell in jenkins like run mm. after jobs are run basically yeah yes yes so again See. here it is there is no defined the role or defined um, job for each individual in a team 
yeah i think correct you already said it's a one of the practice it's not a protocol actually yes yes it's a practice it's a culture okay. yeah correct i think oh. it's a, i think the ca series should it's a, how to say it should not uh, dependent to the any any person yes. who are so, no they can do okay so uh, we yes uh, basically we have three teams actually developer builds the job and tester tests his code mm-hmm. and whenever the tester completes his testing and everything whenever all these stages get finished then the devops guy is going to run his whatever let's say the terraform code basically which mm-hmm. he used to apply and everything basically there will be three teams but in between that will be a multi branch pipeline actually that's how we are operating okay. any other references are welcome okay Okay, so anyhow, yeah. we will have the um, uh, QA session and discussion session at the end uh, um, because uh, let me see uh, the demo and let me do on it. Then uh, definitely we will have it at the end. Uh, we'll have our discussions and QA sessions. We'll have it at the end. Okay, so thank you. So again, we'll be here. We'll be creating a, like a pipeline one by one as a sequence. We want to create, uh, plan, code, build it, the unit testing, spin up testing, the environment, the integration testing. Again, if you consider here in the tie, testing itself, we have many. So everything we want to automate. Okay, so for that we will be using uh, many tools or their automation tools, and we want to automate a different types of testing here. So we have where we'll be having integration testing, system integration test, smoke test, user acceptance test, load test, performance test, various other testing to the security test, DevOps security test are there. So many are there. So we want to automate the entire thing one by one. Again, based- I have a question here. Can I interrupt? Yes. How do you automate user acceptance tests? See, Is based- that a possibility? based on the acceptance criteria that's not user acceptance test then i'm sorry i, mean, yeah. I might be i might be saying something absurd but okay. to best of my knowledge okay user acceptance test acceptance most probably test, will be the exploratory testing like it is um, maybe may not be yes um, yeah but should this be in the devops part that user acceptance test is automated i don't think so because This test usually you will do it on production. As far as I know, okay. nothing is automated yes, yes, on production. Yes. yes. Okay. So okay. I mean, it's, but uh, some there are some uh, practices okay. like uh, behavioral uh, driven development uh, practices uh, and tools like uh, Cucumber, which allow yes. us to uh, allow us to automate the uh, user acceptance kind of yes. a test or acceptance criteria test where the uh the product manager yes. itself can uh, give the uh, format in the required uh, uh, the given when then format yeah, that, that can be automated uh, completely which is completely fine all i'm saying is there is a difference between business scenario what you're talking about is the cucumber part which is the business scenarios which you develop or you design within your team what user acceptance test is outside of your boundary when you release it to production or on production and then you ask the real users to test it your product owner is not the real user product owner will go and give this product to xyz customers which may be alpha or beta alpha as in you know the uh, the similar concept of alpha beta testing but all i'm asking is the, is user acceptance tests which is automated here you mean within the organization or to the to the client am i making it through, clear or uh, not uh, i think the, i think the client might not be yes. uh, might not be possible in true devops cycle but then for uh, the uh, i mean for a team uh, the product owner or the product manager is like a customer proxy like, and as um, long as he gives those acceptance criteria and it can be automated like, i think that Yeah, alpha or beta testing is. Yes. 
actually across industry the definition of uat is different that's why yeah. it is causing a confusion mostly i guess yes and this topic is related to devops not to so actually it will not be like a end user like this one in the production environment we want to ensure that that our user uh, criteria or as we are are we meeting or not then this so should be that? named as then this should be named as business scenario test okay. not the user acceptance test i mean this is completely from my experiences okay. so please please uh, excuse me if i if i said sure. something wrong okay sorry for that Okay. Sure, but then uh, there are also practices like uh, test data replication, wherein the production data can be brought in into a stage kind of an environment, and then we can kind of replicate the scenarios. So, but that is uh, must. No, it might not. You, you, be production, yes, that's production you production must. Like. Yeah, yeah, you, that's production like, but we never use the production data to test. It's masking. The test data is masked completely if you are using the production data, and you don't use exactly the test data. from production it's only a part of it so, which is also masked i i agree i mean i know it it cannot be a complete replacement to user experience for sure okay 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 yeah sorry okay. sorry for yes. interruption yes. sorry for interruption okay so again uh, Uh, we have uh, different layers of testing uh, where we have the testing pyramid uh, where we want to have a automated unit testing and component testing uh, integration api testing and automated gui test and again we'll have a uh, uh, exploratory testing manual testing like many layers are there okay so again how do we use these uh, different types of testing what all the tools we will be using for uh, each uh, layer and how do we choose it okay so so when there are various test automation tools are available for each layer the most widely used are the unit and component testing like junit nunit uh, spock test mocha many are uh, there and uh, like uh, for api testing we have to go for manual testing means postman rest assured is for um, automation so again for end to end testing we'll be going for catalan selenium web driver ivo cucumber robot framework many many more are there many scriptless uh, tools are there scripted tools are there okay frameworks many are available and once the ga is ready then we want to do the compare the ga maybe is using some visual testing we want to okay yes the selenium we will be using um, uh, test ng also okay so many tool again visual testing tools again we have to select uh, each of, uh, tool depends on which type of your uh, testing we are going to do okay so again uh, do we have is so we are primarily talking on java based here is like this with if we have for again uft many are there that's what so well if you at your ui based test they can be expensive to run that okay the questions i will be uh, working through it at the end i will have it i think related to this means i can answer it now okay yes sir okay 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 so do we need to use a uh, different tools for a uh, different testing that is one thing here how do we choose the tools uh, there are many tools are available most focus here we are doing for web applications okay so or any all in one tool available like uh, nowadays uh, we are uh, developing uh, functionality as a api so for api testing before the ga is ready we would be finishing the functional testing by doing the apis okay our uh, well development itself we will be doing the unit testing tdd test driven development at the component layer we want to um, provide the stub and mock and stubbing and provide create the component testing so which tool we have to choose uh, which will cover uh, most of these uh, types of testing okay so again uh, we have most widely web uh, uh, 
testing auto test automation tool as the selenium which is a widely used one now nearly for the two decades uh, we are using it and we have a huge community for selenium which is uh, which supports uh, many uh, languages uh, many um, uh, browsers and in all the almost in all the environments so it has uh, it's open source also so most widely used one is the selenium for web automation and uh, again here if you go for uh, selenium if you want to do the uh, unit testing we have to choose the frameworks like uh, junit uh, test ng look these things and if you want to go for again functional behavioral wise means then we have to go with uh, for bdd means you will to choose the cucumber and uh, for reports again we have to use other external library or other external um, uh, tools are available so for, for api we have to use uh, rest assured or uh, any other tools okay so here the problem here is the versioning and uh, the tool selection which want to select all those things are there so to overcome that uh, we want to have uh, one tool like a common tool which can be used for end to end as well as for uh, unit testing api testing visual testing everything so nowadays uh, the cypress is the one uh, which is emerging one for web applications um so instead of uh, selecting uh, different tools and uh, different frameworks uh, in case of selenium we want to use all in one tool which is the cypress where they have all the um, libraries and tools uh, again so, so still here also we have some restrictions but uh, again most of the web applications um, are using modern web technologies so we want to uh, go for uh, a tool which can be uh, very well go with uh, dynamic ajax calls uh, we want to go with so for that uh, the cypress helps a lot um, which will be taken care in the cypress itself it will wait for the entire page to load each element to load and it will automatically assert inside and ensure that the web element is available so there are many uh, advantages available and uh, the huge uh, documentation is provided in cypress cypress is the it is also a open source and it's developed in node.js and um, uh, here the we have little some constraints here we can develop cypress test cases in uh, javascript and we can use here only the mocha library uh, and the chai assertion library and mocha only we can use it here okay and uh, okay so still it is uh, some restrictions are there but uh, it has a huge one for network testing api testing and we can create the stubs and things and uh, again the moreover the architecture itself they entirely different if you see here okay so it's uh, mainly it is for end to end testing so one of the tool which is used for end to end testing like cypress is the next generation front end testing tool used to create end to end testing for modern web applications with the latest web technologies like angular view react js okay so those uh, technologies have modern modern web elements and more uh, dynamically loading the web elements so we want to ensure uh, that um, before loading the web element we want to ensure in case of selenium everywhere we have to use the wait or synchronizations we have to use it but everything is taken care by cypress the reason is cypress test are executing inside the browser itself so there is no json wire protocol or json any driver for separate browsers so again here our cypress test is going to be executed inside the browser as with the application so there is no delay or no, no flaky test results okay the test results will be very much consistent okay so actually it was developed for the front end developers by the front end developers because once they want to uh, while testing itself they want to ensure uh, the quality 
so that was the aim uh, it was started in the beginning okay but later uh, the qa also started using it because of its effectiveness for end to end testing so qa also started using the for automation okay so the architecture is entirely different again uh, it's running inside the browser so because of it is running inside the browser there is no call out there is no it has to wait for the web element everything so everything is taken care by the uh, cypress itself okay uh, again faster in setting up and writing the test running the test and debugging the test we will run one test demo test on it then you will understand how fast it is okay setting up is very much easier again we need to have a node js and uh, npm packages uh, cypress is uh, provided as the npm package if you see here yes okay so sorry So Cypress uh, official uh, website is cypress.io. Um, so there we have a uh, many good uh, documentations are available for Cypress. Okay. So setting up is also very easier here. If you see the uh, download weekly, how uh, how many are uh, using it, how uh, uh, fast it is emerging, we can find it. So it's widely started yes. used by the. Are you sharing your screen or? Ye yes, it's not. Cannot sharing. see Cyprus execution. Just a minute, I'll ensure. Mm -hmm. What is Cyprus? Yes. Uh, Cyprus is a tool. Uh, for test automation, for web application automation. Um, it's like uh, test or uh, Selenium. Okay, it's a test automation tool uh, where we can uh, do the unit testing, network like uh, API level testing endpoints, we can do it. We can create the stubborn mocking, we can do it at the network layer, we can do it. And end to end testing, we can do and visual testing we can do. And especially it has uh, many features like dashboard features is available, which is very much helpful for continuous uh, uh, integration environment where we can integrate our uh, Cypress with any of the CAE uh, tools. And uh, once we have executed it, the results will be updated in the Cypress dashboard itself, okay. So which, is, which will be very much helpful, which will provide the video screenshots of the test. And for debugging also, it will be very helpful. Uh, we'll see the demo on it, then you can really understand uh, how far it is uh, having the facilities. And uh, no, no, no yes? Cypress only used for uh, front-end. Front-end, yes. Only for web applications. Well, you could use you could use for, for API, APIs also. APIs. API is also there. Functional testing, end-to-end -end testing, we can do it. Okay. And uh, here we are. Uh, I, go, I guess they recently added the support for microservices as well. Actually. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they are adding many features. They are adding now. They have added the Cypress Studio for record and playback. Um, so many are there. Okay. And it provides the deep, uh, dashboard to view the test results in the CA environment. That is a great one, which is uh, which we can use it for in the DevOps environment. Okay. So if you see the architecture again, why it is faster means uh, it's uh, creating the proxy. Uh, it's a node server is there, which will create a proxy. This proxy will uh, run your test inside the browser. So in case all will be using uh, JSON wire protocol and the driver will be there for uh, each uh, browser through the driver only we will be connecting to the actual application okay so that the driver will be as a middle layer 
and uh, we'll be using like a HTTP uh, request and response, but that is not the case in case of Cypress. Cypress um, just will be executed inside the browser itself. Okay, so it is very much faster here. And uh, we have many other uh, features, uh, time travel, and uh, see once we are executing some 10 steps earlier, what we have done in the first step after execution, we want to see what we have done in the first step, time travel, we can go and see the log, which will provide what, has, what, what was the state of the application in that particular step, we can verify it, okay. And uh, real time reloads again, uh, each uh, for each, uh, web element, it will wait and it will wait for uh, ensure that the web element is available. It's, there is no like uh, no such element exception or no stay, uh, element exception will be there, it, which has been taken care by the Cypress itself. And sp spies, stubs and clocks, it's like it's very much helpful in um, network uh, layer or component testing where we can pass the data and do it. And a consistent result, yes, because of it is running inside the browser, no flaky test result, no fa false results will be. And it will provide the consistent, every time, when, how many times you are running, the same results it will provide. But in case of Selenium, we may get it. Sometimes the test will pass, sometimes the test will fail because of some network issue or getting, if it is, there is a delay in getting the response, but that may not be the case in Cypress. And if you go for debuggability, yes, they are providing a very good debug. In the test runner itself, we can provide, we can view the uh, debugging options are available. Automatic weighting is available. Yes, the assertions here, we are going to use the chai assertion. And here internally, the Cypress, each command have the assertions to ensure that the applicable element is in the uh, expected state. And again, network traffic control against uh, yes. Uh, still, uh, I can see the browser. Um, no, the PowerPoint. Uh, no, no, no. There's no PowerPoint. It's only the Cypress. Uh, oh, so uh, I think one, one, one at a time. I couldn't. I could select it. I think. Just yeah, you can share yes. Yeah. yes. You, you can no, show the yeah. screen completely. Yes, yes. The... Just a minute. Okay. Okay. Sorry for interruption. Yes. Okay. So again, um, uh, network layer itself, we can uh, create the stub. We can mock it, whatever we are getting as a response. We can mock the response. And uh, we, without opening the browser in the headless execution, we can do at the network layer itself, we can do the testing. And it has a very good option of providing the screenshots and videos. It will record the video in case of uh, executing in the uh, CA environment. It will create the videos and we can refer the videos also how the test has been executed. And we can enable or disable this video option that is also possible. So we have a headless execution and in the browser, opening the browser, we can have it. And it supports the brow many browsers also, I think apart from IE and uh, I think most of the browsers it is supporting uh, Chrome, all the Chromium versions are the Edge, uh, Firefox, um, so fire, everything it supports. And uh, again, it has a very, uh, integration with uh, other tools also, like the reporting and all, we can have a very good reporting. Mocha reports are there, we can integrate it with. And uh, and other uh, visual testing tools. Again, visual testing is one of the great feature in uh, Cypress. Uh, like uh, if you want to compare the GUI, we can compare it like uh, any change in the um, uh, CSS or something, any, like uh, if you want to have a calculations, more calculations are there. If you want to come, instead of comparing the data one by one, we can compare the entire screen itself. It will take the snapshot of the screen and it will compare the screen itself. So those facilities are available in Cypress. Okay. Yeah, okay. And, yes. Uh, yeah. How, the, how is the uh, parallel executions uh, in Cypress? Which one? 
uh, parallel executions of the test parallel questions. execution uh, we can do it in the dashboard uh, again uh, it's uh, in the docker we will be creating uh, with uh, each browsers uh, they will provide the images there will be deploying and we'll create the job from the dashboard we can run it parallel execution okay. thank you okay so just a small comparison between the selenium and cypress actually why we are comparing here is the selenium is most widely used one so i have taken selenium as for comparison but actually when you uh, if you say that we cannot compare the selenium and uh, cypress because the entirely the both the architecture are different here okay whereas uh, some of the features uh, which everyone knows i want to compare it so support selenium supports many languages like uh, java shisha python many languages it supports whereas the cypress supports the only the javascript the reason what they are telling is uh, most of the web applications uh, we are developing based on javascript only so they want to have only on the javascript and uh, supports multiple tabs again in cypress there is no direct way still it is achievable and multiple domains in the same test, we cannot uh, navigate to a different domain and do the testing. Okay, but still it allow in a different testing, we can do it. Okay, and the cross browser testing, there is no direct uh, way of uh, cross browser testing. Again, we have to create the images uh, and we have to do the testing. Okay, and uh, there is uh, no mobile testing here. It's only purely for web applications. And the mobile testing, the web applications, um, hybrid applications, we can test it here by setting the viewport the, for different sizes, and we can ensure that whether it is uh, the GA uh, is responsive or not. We can do that in uh, still in Cypress. Okay, and uh, in Selenium, if you see again, it's been in the widely used in the industry for nearly two decades. So we have a very good community is there. But for Cypress, uh, it started nearly um, recently. So the community wise, it is less, but we have very good documentation for uh, Cypress automation. It supports, uh, Selenium supports uh, remote execution using the Selenium grid. Whereas the Cypress, uh, no support for remote execution. The thing is before moving to the production, we want to ensure the quality. So everything will be uh, only in the um, local environment only, okay. And supports many frameworks like JUnit, TestNG. Here it supports only the Mocha, okay. Uh, from the Cypress point of view, if you see here, it's again, it's having the um, playground and test runner it is having which has a very good uh, option of playground where we can locate the elements easily. That is a one, uh, one of the uh, pain point when we are using Selenium, but uh, Cypress make it ease with the providing the playground option. And uh, again, the Selenium use uh, different locators for DOM elements. And here the automatic weight, as we tell, uh, there is no need to explicitly provide the implicit weight, wait for the particular element to load. In internally, it uses the assertions to verify whether, okay. And uh, automatic screenshots and videos are available. And especially when we are doing it in a continuous integration environment, it will execute the test cases in headless mode. There, uh, in, in headless mode, it will uh, record every test. So later it will be easy for us in continuous integration environment that too, if you're running the huge number of test cases, really it will be very helpful for us, which test case got failed, when it got failed, okay. And in case of failure, it will take the screenshots also, okay. And uh, runs the test, very good documentation. As I told, uh, if you see the uh, Cypress website, just I want to share. So very good documentation is uh, available. Um, maybe webinar videos, many are there for Cypress. So again, it is now it is 7.2 version. Um, the recent version is 7.2. Okay. Okay. 
and it has the run the test inside the browser so no need of any external web driver and no need to ensure that our browser version and the driver version should be same no need of all these things because of it is running inside the browser the execution is also very much faster and uh, have the test runner and the dashboard features like test runner which have the uh, we can go time travel and we can see what all the steps it got executed and each step what was the state of the application that also will be helpful for us and built-in support for mocks, tab and spies and clocks, everything for uh, which we, at the network layer also we can mark the responses. Okay, network, okay. So there are many features available. Just I want to show you a simple uh, uh, demo on uh, Cypress test. And one of the main uh, special feature is uh, the dashboard feature. Again, the dashboard is um, available for uh, free use also and also the paid version is available for uh, free uh, we have some restrictions are there for paid users we have more uh, facilities reporting facilities everything is available okay so the cypress dashboard is a service that gives you access to the recorded test results typically when running cypress test from your ci provider and the dashboard provides you insight into what happened when your test was running and can run the in a headless mode in the CI environment. So as I told, which will generate the videos for later verification. And these results will be published in the Cypress dashboard. So we will see a small demo on how fast the Cypress test will be executing and uh, how we can integrate it with the dashboard, how we can do the API testing. I want to show only two or three uh, demos on it. We already have created the samples. Okay, let me see it. I want to share the screen. I have used uh, VS Code for uh, execution, the creation of the test specs. Okay, so let I give you one sample for so some to-do application, how fast it is, uh, just I want to create a post uh, in the to-do action and how I want to delete that action. So if you see the test scripts here, uh, I have created the um, folder and I have installed the Cypress, just one line of uh, installation that is NPM install Cypress, will install the latest uh, Cypress version and where we have the package.json uh, file that is NPM package or JSON file where we have the detailed sub out and uh, how we want to execute the scripts we will be providing in the package session. And about the Cypress configuration file, we have the Cypress uh, dot JSON file, which is the configuration file where we will be using the base URL and uh, all, all the configuration setup we can provide it either I want to generate the video or not and uh, any, every file change if I want to automatically run the test cases or not in which sequence I want to execute if I want if my test case failed do I want to redo the retry or not everything we can configure in the cypress.json file okay so I have created the uh, um, script here if you see the script then you can easily understand the scripts also here the cypress comments are easy to understand okay so here i have just uh, created uh, deploy this one and uh, enter the to application and the just a list of uh, to do items and i'm running it uh, i'm uh, checking whether all the to do items are available and i want to uh, delete some of the completed actions I want to delete it so if you see if I run this application like I can, I can run it from here like npm run see I open again it's based purely on the node.js so we can use the npm packages This will open the test runner where it will list the list of test specs. I, we can choose uh, either of uh, test specs or if you want to run all the test specs, we can run it. And from the test runner, we can select which browser we want to test it also. 
okay that is in the, from the command line also we can give the command how which browser we want to execute or from the browser in the test runner we can select the option uh, for the initial time let uh, it takes time let it be So again, if you see here, I have created for a as the runner has been launched here. This is the test runner. Sorry. Yes. See here we have I have the two test specs there. Here we can select the browser in which browser. What all the browser I am having in my uh, system will be listed here. I have Chrome Edge. By default, uh, the Cypress uh, test will be executed in Electron. Okay, and uh, just I want to run the spec here. the execution is uh, will be very faster okay so when you see the debugging uh, again time travel before uh, uh, each step what was the state of the application can be provided here and uh, see here the test results okay in each state how the each step, what was the state of the application? Okay. Again, here it will provide the playground option. I as I have told you, playground option, which is used for selecting the web element. Here, the playground option, I can go and select it. The play, uh, the element locator will be this is one of the pain point we use to face it in Selenium. So, this the uh, locator will be provided by the Cypress runner itself. Okay. That is one of the main advantage. And again, uh, with the browser, with the runner, we can run it very fast. See that it is taking only 15 seconds to execute these uh, test cases. So if you see the steps here, again, it has uh, many steps here. Okay, so the entire steps got executed in uh, 15 seconds, again, like this. It for a very much helpful for end to end testing, it is uh, because of its uh, fastness. Okay, and uh, if I see here, like uh, for uh, again for network testing, uh, if you go here, intercept here, I have created one sample for. Uh, hmm. A network layer if I want to talk to a network layer it's like a normal application uh, yes let I share the screen for so for this application I'm creating a new post there it is uh, displaying the popular tags many tags are there but if i want to mock the response i want to display only the three tags that is also possible at the network layer uh, we can mark the response here here i have marked the response here i want only the three um, tags i want to display here these tags how i have provided here is here in the Cypress, if you see the project folder structure, it is having the fixtures. Fixtures are nothing but the data if you want to pass as a JSON, we will we can provide it here. And uh, 
our uh, test scripts will be under the integration examples folder by default and the plugins any external by any plugins if you want to do if you have to configure them here in the cypress and it's frozen again the screen is frozen yes no it's there yeah thank you oh, yeah so here we have plugins and we have to provide the configuration and one more advantage here in cypress is we can create the custom commands that is also possible here and uh, so when i see here and i want to show you one more sample for um, api testing is yes, we have directly communicated with the api endpoints here here so the same application i'm doing the api uh, testing here i'm interacting with i'm creating a new article and i want to check uh, whether i have created this article or not okay if i run this one so let i run it So npm command run cy open okay for to execute in a um, opening a browser and executing we will be doing a cypress open for executing in a headless uh, mode we can do it as a cypress run which will execute the test cases and display the results in the terminal itself okay. and again in case of um, headless execution it will record the test cases as the video it will be available if i see the show you the sample here however what i can see in the code right now is there is a lot of hard coding actually is there some framework available for cypress where we can remove the hard coding and all the yeah, page object model we can use and uh, we can use it yeah because so I mostly we will be developing how we will be developing is as a custom commands we will be developing and we will use it here as the functions we will be callback functions we will create and use the functions okay each command as the separate custom command we will create it and do we have a github link where the portal framework is developed because do we have a github link or like some kind of a vs code where you can show that actually because custom command you want not custom command like uh -huh. a framework kind of development wherein yes you can yes. Do yes we can develop you can use a uh, here we can use a bdd framework or you can use a pom also we can implement it in cypress maybe if you can show that that would be helpful yes but uh, yeah i want to show it uh, for the uh, continuous integration point of view i want to show the demo because the session is not based fully for the cypress so i couldn't show the samples for uh, many of these things that is the reason i have created a sample uh, simple one for it because the for the si if the session is for the specific for the cypress i can have the uh, elaborate session on it because here i want to focus more on the continuous uh, testing in the ca environment how the cypress helpful for it okay oh, that's okay. okay yeah that's uh, api testing how it is used uh, each layer of testing how it is helpful okay so here i have used the uh, for each layer again i have marked the response here if you instead of uh, displaying this many tags in the application and just i want to so the initial on site created login into see only popular tags i have mocked the response at the network layer itself we can interact and we can change the responses 
in uh, Cyprus, that is one more advantage here. See in the in real application, how much it is sh showing is, how many tags are available. Can you all see the screen? This one. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, and yes. uh, in the ones in the mock the response uh, i have very few here okay only three no, no, just a quick a quick question uh, yes. and there's yeah not not really a question but hmm. uh, the api tests which i see you are triggering at first <clears throat> excuse me hmm. uh, from the first is the ui but is it possible that i don't have an application which has a ui and still I want to use Cypress. With the headless also we can do it, not an issue, only the AP. Here I have used it. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the interceptor, only mocking the response. Network. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. yeah. I can mm -hmm. run it in the headless mode also, we can run it. So here I have used only the endpoints, I have used it here. Right, so instead of the instead of the GUI, we can oh. have just the, the requests, the oh. endpoint, right? Yes, yes. Perfect, okay. 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 We had actually they are interacting with the endpoints only. This we can run it in the headless mode also, not an issue. There is no need of launching the UA everything here. Okay. So that is the main advantage for uh, this one. And I want to show you the sample on uh, Cypress uh, dashboard because uh, we have very uh, limited time now. Uh, yes, uh, this is the dashboard uh, facility provided by the Cypress itself where we can create the project, uh, we can uh, uh, link our, here what I have done is my uh, VS code, I have integrated my project that is the test script, Cypress project I have created where I have the test scripts, which I have integrated with the GitHub. I have maintaining my uh, scripts, uh, test scripts in the so um, GitHub. And uh, this uh, GitHub and the VS code I have integrated. So whenever there is a commit, I will push this to the GitHub. And this Cypress project and the dashboard, uh, the Cypress dashboard, we have to register into the dashboard where it is a free available, free version is available. So I have registered into the Cypress dashboard where we can create it as a project here. Once we have created the project, uh, this project will uh, give the key, some key values will be giving. Those key values I have to integrate it with uh, my uh, Cypress, uh, already the test scripts which we have created here, like the crease will be created while running uh, my Cypress uh, test cases. I have to use those keys. And in the Cypress, I have to use the project ID to make the link between the dashboard and my, uh, test specs, okay? So here I have uh, created the dashboard project. And this dashboard project has generated the um, IDs that I have uh, linked it with my um, actual test specs. Okay, here I have executed them some time back, six hours back, and which uh, got updated my uh, test results and um, if you see the test result, this is very much helpful in case of uh, CA environment. Really here we have, it, it automatically generate the videos. So we'll come to know where actually the test got failed and for uh, failures, it will provide, uh, take the screenshots and uh, also available. And uh, from here, in case of any failure, I can, from the dashboard itself, we can uh, verify which code uh, got failed. So those facilities are available here. And uh, this test case, again, it got failed here. Yes, which one, which source code, in which line it got failed. So directly, because here the dashboard project I have integrated with uh, GitHub, which um, where I'm maintaining my test scripts. So there is also available GitHub uh, plugin is available here. I, I can integrate it with the in GitHub here. I have done it integrated with my, my, my master branch. I have integrated here. From there, it is pulling my core executing and it is integrated purely here. Okay. So these facilities are available uh, for continuous uh, testing in the CA environment. 
So really the dashboard will be helpful for uh, continuous testing where we will be uh, deploying the code in the Docker. Again, the Cypress uh, Docker images are available and with that we'll uh, test it and the dashboard, the results will be updated in the dashboard. And if you see the dashboard, again, it will provide the huge uh, status report like this one. Okay, which will be helpful for to generate the reports and in case of uh, a huge number of test results there we can uh, easily locate, uh, we can come to the analysis based on these reports. Okay, so this is what the overall uh, dashboard facility, which is very much helpful for uh, continuous testing in the CA environment. Okay. Oh, this again, I can run this uh, test cases from Jenkins, any one of the uh, CA tool, like I want to run it from, uh, I have already executed because of time lap, just a minute. I can show you the results. So the same project, sometime back I have executed here. Okay. So which has generated the results. And again, from the Jenkins, uh, any of the CI integrator, we can navigate to the dashboard here from here. So we can view the results also. So after executing the test in the pipeline, in the CACD pipeline, uh, we can view the results in the dashboard, which will give the very elaborate results here. Okay. Any flaky test results, which were which file got executed in which order it was. So just I'm sorry. Okay. So this how the Cypress was helpful in uh, continuous testing. Okay. Yes. With this, uh, just we have seen how Cypress is helpful. What is uh, DevOps, how, what is continuous testing and what is continuous integration. Um, some of the tools like uh, how Cypress is helpful in that we have seen it. Okay, any, any questions? Uh, hi, Anandi. Hey, hi. Uh, this is Sai Krishna. I just want to know, like, uh, uh, like, uh, like Jenkins, we can uh, integrate with browser stack or any other source labs. Uh, browser stack and uh, source labs, uh, it may not be for parallel execution. Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, for parallel. Execution. Uh, parallel execution uh, again, uh, like uh, here they are insisting on Docker images, so where we'll be having it in uh, different images, and we can create it and execute it. For that, we need uh, infrastructure, like RAM, etc., right? Because yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hi, Anandi. Yes. I have a question. Yes. So, uh, is there any, for example, uh, we are doing uh, automation selling in Java now? Uh, if you want to move to Cypress, is there any, uh, 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 is there any support? Which Cypress tool provides to port the automation uh, from Java to Java to Cypress? I'm just asking if there is any such, Java. Uh, I mean, if there is any option to uh, port our test cases if you want to operate from Java to Cypress, is there any option that uh, Cypress supports to convert our test cases from uh, say Java uh, to uh, Cypress? No, 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 because the architecture entirely it is different. Here it's only in JavaScript. There is no direct. So we have to write a fresh. Right? Yes, so yes. Again, it has the visual testing also. One more thing I want to do it because without comparing at least, without running at least, I can show you. See, for visual testing, it will uh, create the snapshot of uh, that uh, test as a base image. It will have it 
and whenever there is a change in the CSS or something, it will compare the, this is the base image, it has taken the snapshot and any difference in the base image, it will create it as a failure thing. So see, it is providing it as a snapshot of uh, difference. What is the difference, where the difference is. So this is also a very, one, um, very good feature for uh, GUI testing it is. Again, we can so, integrate, yes. Yeah. Sorry. So while doing this visual testing, does it do like pixel to pixel or like only just a DOM element comparison? It's, it's like a pixel to pixel it will be. Oh, okay. Again, we can for visual testing, it is having um, images, a snapshot it will take and compare it with, but still we can uh, integrate it with the uh, Percy or uh, Apply tool we can uh, integrate and we can generate also. So Zephyr, this is an open source tool. I, yes, uh, I, it is an open source tool. Yeah, it is an open okay. source tool. But I just uh, remember I saying that dashboard comes with one paid feature. Da so dashboard is uh, for, yes, if you want to use it in uh, real time means then we have to go for the paid version because uh, this uh, free version I'm using where uh, the test results uh, and all will not be available for longer duration and many well, little more uh, restricted uh, facilities we have. Only the dashboard is the, again, for enterprise level, dashboard is the paid version. Thank you. Uh, Anandi, I yes. see like uh, the tests are like, I iPhone X, iPhone mini, like they, does it support uh, like uh, mobile API, like kind of FPM or kind of? Not like that for, uh, no, it will not support, but uh, the re responsiveness, hybrid applications, we can check the responsiveness. Oh, okay, okay, fine, okay, okay. yeah. So if you see the code for uh, visual testing, yes. See, just I can set the resolution and uh, I can uh, check the responsiveness. That's it, we can do it here. Yes. Any more question, guys, before we wrap up the session for today? Feel free to ask if you have any further question. No. Thank you, Anandi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the one good session. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.